All right, folks, uh, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce my next guest, legendary Iron Maiden vocalist, but also Renaissance man, Bruce Dickinson, a guest today on Do You Know Jack radio show all the way from Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, Canada. How are you doing, Bruce? I'm doing great. How are you doing? You must be... Uh uh, a little bit cold up there at the moment. Yeah, well, we just got a big dumping of snow, and it's like minus 16 Celsius. So, I mean, it could it could be a lot worse. It could be, you know, minus 35, minus 40, which is sort of the common <laughs> t- trend for this time of year. I, I, I'm not even going to tell you how cold it is here because you'd laugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you you've been up here though. You're sort of an honorary uh, ice pilot, as was uh, documented in the show Ice Pilots NWT. So, uh, you know, you're kind of uh, you know moderately aware of the flora and fauna, at least. Oh no, absolutely. Although when I was up there, it was a beautiful, uh, <laughs> beautiful sunny day, and it was uh, summer, and it was really it was it was lovely, you know. So, uh, uh, but I, I I've seen the pictures. Uh, I've seen the movie. <laughs> Uh, I guess, you know, so I, I know how brutal it gets uh, in, in the winter. And, um, we're, uh, we, you know, we um, I had a great time up there. I mean, really. And, 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 you know, flying with flying with Buffalo Joe was just, you know, one of those uh, you know, unforgettable moments, especially in the. Uh, when he was flying his float plane with him, just just genius. Yeah, for sure. Well, now that that's sort of that in the documentary Flight Triple Six. I mean, you know, that's where we sort of found out your love of aviation, and then of course, you know, you've released your memoir, What Does This Button Do, which came out October thirty first, and we sort of get to find out kind of you know the root of uh, your your love for all things aviation in that book. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously. Uh, uh, I ended up uh, in a you know a, an interesting uh, sort of uh, interesting scenario with that where I, I, I got a job as an airline pilot. You know, obviously I, I was you know I, I was a, a, a flyer and, and and people do that kind of thing. But I, I just took it to a, a, a kind of a interesting uh, interesting place. Uh, nobody really expects uh, the lead singer of Iron Maiden to turn up. You know, flying a flying a jet airplane um, <laughs> with passengers on board. Um, but that's you know that's what I did. And then further to that, ended up getting involved in TV documentaries. Mm-hmm. And I was ten years as an airline pilot until the airline, unfortunately, it wasn't my airline, uh, but unfortunately, it went uh, bust as airlines frequently do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I started, you know, I started my own maintenance business and training business and this kind of thing, mm. uh, basically because I have a passion for flying and I wanted to pass it on. And I still fly, uh, you know, as well, as still as an airline pilot, I'm still going. Anyway, through all of that, I ended up uh, meeting the guys from Buffalo and they actually flew a couple of their uh, water bombers over and stored them with my company in Cardiff. And then wow. that's how I ended up going back up to Yellowknife and uh, flying up there with Joe on uh, on uh, on the DC three, so it of was course, such yeah. a cool day. I mean, <laughs> I, I I would have I actually had the invite to go back and maybe get a validation on my license and go and uh, maybe go and fly with them in uh, in, in the winter on the uh, on the Curtis Commando, uh-huh. uh, and I was just like, yeah, I I would I would do that, except that probably my family and my manager and everybody else. Would, and the people who the business would now kill me because yeah. they're like, uh, we kind of need you around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and make a, a few observations here uh, about your book. Uh, you know, for one, I've read several uh, rock autobiographies just over the last couple of years, and one one thing I noticed is uh, just the level of vocabulary and of course the specific uh, literary references that you're using in the book which i mean not not to slight any other books but i mean this is you know uh, pretty uncommon but then just reading up a little bit you you've written works of fiction before so i suppose when words like vexatious and uh you know uh ref- references to the elephant man come up no one should be surprised should they yeah, well well uh, yeah but i you know just yeah <laughs> I'm not really good at doing dumbed down. I, I would rather people, if people don't know what a, if people don't know what a word is, I would rather they take pleasure in going, hey, wow, what's that word mean? <laughs> hey, that's a cool word, you know. So, yeah. so that's it, and and that 
kind of curiosity. It's not trying to be, you know, it's not trying to be smart ass or anything. Um, oh, no. It's just, it's just, it's just using, you know, if you've got a lot of colors to paint with, you use whichever ones you, you need to use at the time, you know, and, yeah. you know, and the more colors you have, the more interesting things y- you can deliver, you know? Uh, sure. So that's all it is. And, and, and yeah, I mean, I did, I did write the whole thing myself. So it, it, there's no ghostwriter or any of that stuff involved in the, uh-huh. in the process. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it's me sitting in a pub with a biro and a big sheet of paper because I didn't use a typewriter either, or a, a word processor or a laptop, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also a music teacher kind of in the real world up here in Canada's north, and, and I'll have to say, uh, you know, let, let me apologize for music teachers everywhere who labeled you, you know, early on in your singing career, of course, not a singer. I, th- I think, you know, there's probably maybe a few people out there that might be eating crow uh, seeing your long and illustrious career. I don't think anybody should be should be eating crow. And, and I'm the first one to look at those situations and, and go, you know what, this is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, because most most of life is, most of life, if you look at it from the outside, is kind of ridiculous. You think, how did that person get to be in that position? What happened there, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and you just have to, I think you just have to be a, a little bit, a little bit relaxed with the, the cards that life deals you with sometimes. Sure. Yeah. And, and just accept that, that you know, you try your best, and you go with your go with your instinct. I think is 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 the best thing that I can say. You you're seldom wrong <laughs> if you go with what you really feel to be the right thing to do. For sure. Well, of course, the human air raid siren though didn't develop until uh, later. Of course, you know your your time with Samson, and then you started to really really delve into that vocal technique. And uh, I mean, are you still doing things to this day? To I mean, maybe this is an obvious question, but I mean, are you still doing things to, to this day to just preserve the vocal cords? Well, uh, not not to the to the extent of anything specific. I mean, I just keep the same old regime. I always do, which is, you know, don't don't abuse them. And mm-hmm. I think that the thing about being a, a, a singer, it's a bit like when you're, um, if you've been uh, an athlete or anything that where you use your body, you just become aware of it. And you're probably more aware of it than other people uh, who, who have never, who have never done that. You know, mm. so, you know, just for the sake of argument, you know, people who play a lot of soccer or things like that will be, they'll, they'll, they'll be acutely aware of, you know, pains in their knees or pains in their ankles or joints or things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And they'll they'll look at them and go, is this serious or is this just a result of wear and tear or what is it, you know. And they, they learn to, you learn to live with things you know you learn to live with stresses and strains in your body and your vocal cords but you you're aware of it um, yeah. and it's that awareness that that builds up over the years and that's what kicks in when you want to quote unquote preserve your voice so uh, i can i can go out down the pub and there's like loud music and everybody's going you know hey, whoa, 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 shouting at each <laughs> other because the music's so damn loud um and i'll go down there and I'll have a good shouting conversation with somebody, knowing that the following morning I'll be like, oh, wow, oh, goodness me. And that really beat the hell out of my voice doing that. But I'm not going to be using my voice for singing or anything serious for a while. So I'm relaxed with it, just drink some water and go and watch TV and stuff. And and, and by the next day, it's fine. But you do that when you actually have to get a real performance out of your voice, and that's a pretty stupid thing to do, because then the next day is hard work. You can stress your voice and all kinds of stuff. It's just an awareness of things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to do, if you're going to do a hundred meter sprint, and you're a hundred meter sprinter, and you're really good, you know, the last thing you want to do um, is go out and play play a heavy game of football the night before and get, you know, kicked in the leg or something. That's a kind of a dumb thing to do. Yeah. But if you weren't going to be racing the next day, it wouldn't matter. True. Now, 
in your book, I mean, we don't want to do too many spoilers here, but you do describe the moment that Rod Smallwood approached you about joining Iron Maiden. And, and I, you know, what? one thing that I love is that you sort of, you know, made three comments and, you know, maybe one was a question. But, but you know, one is your sort of pseudo bravado about how, you know, I will be successful in the audition. The other thing that struck me was your concern for what was going to happen with Paul Deanna once he exited the band or, you know, had they told him yet. And then the other thing that you mentioned was, you know, would they be prepared for a dramatic turn with the vocals, which would probably significantly influence the band's style? And I, I found those three, you know, statements that you made to Rod early on very fascinating. Well, yeah, but the, the, it was a similar thing when, when they got Blaze Bailey in. Mm -hmm. And I really like Blaze. I mean, I like him as a, as a just as a, a, a human being. He's a, he's a lovely guy. Um, and, you know, I remember going to the management Officers and and um, there was a, a guy who doesn't work for the management anymore, but he was he was telling me how you know how great this whole thing was and how brilliant it was going to be and everything else. And I said, look, I said, no, no. I said, I said, look, uh, he's got this great gig. Of course, he's going to take the job. He's been offered the job. Of course, he's going to take it. Mm -hmm. I said, but he, he you know, um, has, has anybody given any thought to? To, to, to where this is going to go with the old with the old stuff and things like that. I mean, has anybody given any thought to how he is going to manage it, not just singing it, but how the fans are going to, how you're going to deal with the fan reaction? Because, you know, I, I was surprised they picked a Blaze. I was delighted for Blaze. Um, mm -hmm. But there was a whole bunch of other, I think I said in the book, there was a whole bunch of, really good singers out there. And I thought, wow, they could have picked somebody with a really, a voice that could sort of, you know, kind of do do, do what my voice did, you know. Uh, but they picked Blaze. Obviously, they wanted to pick somebody different, you know. Yeah. But that came with its own set of challenges. And I just wondered whether anybody in the in the management was, was, was you know, really giving anybody any serious words of, words of truth on... Do you know what you know? How hard this could be, you know, yeah. um, to, to do this. But anyway, so in that same vein, that was me when I fronted up Rod about when he asked me to audition. I said, look, you know, don't beat about the bush. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now um, unless you were pretty sure that you know you, you wanted to offer me the job. But the question is, do you want the whole package that comes with it? Because that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Because I don't, uh, you know, I don't do zero, one, two, three. I go zero and I go to ten. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's what you get. <laughs> you get full on yeah. ten. That's it. Um, yeah. if, if you want a shrinking violet, just let me know now, and I'll I'll shrink away, and you can give it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. You know. So so I was I was I was I was full on, and I'm not sure where that comes from. Uh, but, um, you know, that's, that's the way I felt. And I suppose the same kind of, um, bullheadedness was why I left because, because I just said, you know, I, I don't like the way this is going creatively. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't feel right to me. So I better go. Well, well, listen, uh, Bruce, it's been great uh, chatting with you today. Uh, I know you guys are uh, getting ready to uh, do a little bit of uh, touring in Europe in 2018. Uh, I guess, you know, with all of these anniversaries and things going, I mean, is, is there ever a chance that Maiden would do some sort of front-to-back album type deal? Uh, well, you know, there's all kinds of things in the offing. I mean, Maiden are not going away. Uh, I'm having the best time of my life touring with Maiden now. The last tour we did, the you know, Book of Souls tour, if you, on the last night in New York, had said, oh, sorry, we forgot to tell you, there's another month and a half of shows, is that okay? I'd have gone, of what do you mean, is it okay? You know, can we do another three months? I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. I was having so much fun on that tour. It was incredible. Um, and uh, so this next tour we're doing uh, has got, really got something to live up to and i think we're all going to work really hard to make sure that it does live up to the very very best we can do we're having a great time 
And if, if you want to ask about a new album, ha, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, listen, Bruce, I'm really appreciative of your time. Uh, the book is called What Does This Button Do? Uh, and it's been on sale since October 31st of 2017 via HarperCollins. Bruce, uh, like I said, uh, a privilege and an honor uh, to chat with you today. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much. Cheers, man. Thank All right, you. bye-bye.